ozone, EWAT, hyperbaric oxygen. There are so many different oxygen therapies out there, but which one is the best one for you? Well, they're not all created equally. They have different impacts, and the best one for you will be determined by what your health concerns are or what your health goals happen to be. It's not a one-size-fits-all. In this video, I'm gonna break down some of the more common oxygen-related therapies, ozone, EWAT, hyperbaric oxygen, talk a little bit about their strengths and their weaknesses, really where they overlap, but primarily where they don't overlap because these are very different therapies with very different results. I'm Dr. Jason Saunders, and for over two decades, I've been practicing hyperbaric medicine in my own clinic while also trying to advance the field, training and certifying hundreds of practitioners inside of hundreds of different clinics worldwide. If you're not already certified or you're looking for additional training and education, I'm gonna put a link to the courses that we teach in the description below. Check out our courses and see if one of them is the right fit for you. Oxygen is a critical molecule required by almost every cell in our body, and there are a number of different ways to deliver it, and I love oxygen of every flavor. Oxygen therapies have tremendous value, and inside of the different ways to deliver it, there are different results that we can expect. They are not interchangeable, and that's really what I wanna talk about in this particular video. Oxygen has two main pathways by which it's going to impact us from a physiological standpoint. One is that it's gonna be an ingredient required by our fuel system to build ATP or cellular energy. The other is more of a cell signaling component. Oxygen has the ability to trigger a cascade of cellular responses for inflammatory control, for immune system activation, and for tissue repair and regeneration. When it comes to technologies that are delivering oxygen therapeutically, some of them are gonna focus a little bit more on the fuel side of the system, while others are going to stimulate more of the repair, regeneration, or immune activation, the cell signaling cascade side of that equation. And so depending on what we're trying to achieve with a patient would determine which of these tools might be most appropriate. The three most common and really most popular oxygen delivering therapies right now are ozone, EWOT, or exercise with oxygen therapy, and then HBOT, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And those are the three we're gonna cover in this video. Let's start with ozone. When you breathe air, you're taking in oxygen. Oxygen in air as a stable molecule is O2, meaning two oxygen molecules that are bound together. Ozone is actually a totally different molecular structure. Ozone is O3, so it's three oxygen molecules bound together. O2 is an incredibly stable molecule. O3 is an incredibly unstable molecule. And it's actually the instability of O3 that we're trying to gain access to when we're using it therapeutically. Ozone is probably best known for its antimicrobial effect. Even your own immune system uses unstable oxygen as a way to fight infection. In that case, our white blood cells use a thing called superoxide, which is a little bit different than ozone, but it's still an unstable oxygen molecule used to fight infection. With ozone, what we're doing is we're ozonating the blood. So in most cases, we're pulling blood out. We then ozonate the blood. And then like an IV, we drive that ozonated blood back into the system for circulation. And now that ozone in circulation is actually gonna be used as an antimicrobial to help your body fight infection. Once that extra oxygen molecule is released and reacted upon, now you have additional O2 in your body. And with that additional O2, you could have some spillover for what some additional O2 in the system might do for you, like driving some increased level of ATP production, and or driving some of the other cellular cascades that we were talking about. But the primary use of ozone is really the reactive side, and its best use case, in my opinion, is really its antimicrobial impact. Next is EWOT, exercise with oxygen therapy. With this therapy, you are exercising, often increasing and decreasing levels of intensity, while breathing increased and decreased levels of oxygen. This is a therapy that's really focused on developing your ability to manage supply and demand of oxygen. As you increase your intensity of exercise, you increase the demand. As you decrease the level of exercise, you're slowly lowering the demand. And while you're breathing higher levels of oxygen, you're increasing the supply. And while you're delivering lower levels of oxygen, you're decreasing the supply. As you create variation of higher intensities and higher oxygen levels, 
lower intensities, lower levels of oxygen. You could also do higher levels of exercise with lower levels of oxygen or lower levels of exercise with higher levels of oxygen. And as you manipulate those different variables, you're creating some degree of cellular adversity and you're trying to improve red blood cells' ability to bind oxygen and deliver oxygen to working tissues or binding oxygen and delivering oxygen during rest periods for recovery purposes. If your goal is to help develop red blood cell resilience, certainly if you're training for anything from a performance standpoint, particularly if you're training for any endurance-related activities and or with changes of elevation, EWAT can be an incredible tool as part of that training strategy or training regimen. There is certainly an increased level of oxygen being delivered to tissues, so there should be some increased capacity for energy production and also maybe some increased level of oxygenation for some of the cellular repair and regeneration side of increased levels of oxygen. However, EWAT is exercise with oxygen therapy. As you're exercising and exercising demand, you're going to be driving additional blood flow to the working tissue, meaning the majority of EWAT's increased level of oxygenation is really going to go to the working cells, the working tissues during that exercise. In other words, if you're trying to massively increase oxygenation to the brain due to a brain injury or a concussion of some kind, and you're using EWAT as your main delivery system, that's not going to have nearly the impact that you're going to want because the overwhelming majority of oxygen is not going to find its way up to the brain. It's going to find its way to, let's say, your arms and legs, depending on what type of exercise you're doing during the EWAT. For whatever reason, a lot of EWAT manufacturers have found success in comparing themselves to hyperbaric oxygen, saying, well, this is a less expensive and much faster tool to deliver excess oxygen. It's a cheaper and easier hyperbaric oxygen delivery system. And I just can't get behind that messaging. Yes, it's an oxygen delivery system. Yes, I'm a big fan and I think there's incredible value. But no, just like ozone has a very specific case use, I would say that EWAT has a very specific case use. And quite honestly, hyperbaric has a very specific case use. And while you could use hyperbaric for exercise recovery, which we'll get to in a minute, hyperbaric will never do for your performance system what EWAT can do. So again, there's a time and a place for each of these. Very different from EWAT, hyperbaric is passive. So EWAT is exercise with oxygen therapy. HBOT is sitting or lying down and breathing pressurized oxygen. As you're relaxed and breathing oxygen in a pressurized environment, you are driving exponentially higher levels of oxygen into circulation. Yes, you will certainly saturate red blood cells to 100%, but more importantly, you're now driving additional oxygen directly into the plasma of the blood. The plasma, which usually contains very little oxygen, less than three milliliters of oxygen per liter of blood, becomes a reservoir of almost unlimited oxygen carrying capacity, depending on what pressure you're being exposed to, what percentage of oxygen you're breathing, and ultimately how long that session is. And as the plasma starts to fill with levels of oxygen, that additional level of oxygen is, is actually going to drive both sides or both pathways that I was describing earlier. It's certainly going to be used for mitochondrial purposes and increasing the level of ATP production but it's also going to be used as a cell signaling molecule that can stimulate immune system activity, could stimulate additional repair and regeneration of cells and tissues, as well as balancing many of the other cells and systems inside of our body. I was saying earlier that EWAT is a little bit more targeted in terms of the majority of the increased level of oxygen is ultimately gonna get shunted to the working cells and tissues. In hyperbaric, it's really very passive, and so that increased level of oxygen has the ability to really go anywhere or everywhere that circulation is going. There are some ways to target. In other words, if I wanted to increase activation to my arm, I could increase movement, create some exercise or mobility while I'm in the chamber to try to direct blood flow there. Or if I wanted to direct more oxygen to my brain, I could do some brain exercises or brain games that are going to activate blood flow to increase to my brain, shunting a little bit more of that oxygen in that direction. But really with hyperbaric, it is a global or systemic therapy where 
all of this increased level of oxygen is going to all of our cells and tissues. Hyperbaric does have an antimicrobial component to it and an immune system activation component to it. But in my opinion, if infection and immune system were the biggest challenges, I would lean much heavier on ozone, at least initially, to get that concern more under control. And then maybe I would lean more into hyperbaric for balancing those systems out. If tissue repair and regeneration was my biggest goal, I wouldn't use ozone. I would use hyperbaric. While it will still stimulate some of that immune activation, its largest impact, its biggest impact, is really in tissue repair, tissue regeneration, and ATP or energy production. And if I'm trying to train for a particular event in my life, or I'm trying to develop certain pathways from a red blood cell oxygenation and red blood cell delivery system, I would certainly lean much heavier on EWAT as my main oxygenation tool. So again, each one of these has incredibly high amount of impact, but our usage should depend on what we're trying to achieve, not depend on which one we'd like more, which one is less expensive, or which one we're being sold in a given moment. We need a deeper understanding of exactly which pathways these different therapies impact, and then develop a protocol of using these different therapies at different times throughout our entire health journey based, again, on health issues or on health goals. Hopefully this helps you understand and wrap your mind around the different oxygen-related therapies. Using the right one at the right time is the right answer. I appreciate your time and attention, and I look forward to seeing you on our next video. Maybe you just bought your first chamber, or you're thinking about buying your first chamber. Maybe that's a home use chamber, or perhaps you're considering offering hyperbaric inside your clinic. And if you're anything like me when I first started, you're realizing how much information there is out there, and you're concerned, are you doing this the right way? Are you being safe? How am I gonna utilize this hyperbaric chamber in the most effective way possible? If you're just getting involved in hyperbarics and you're looking for an introductory training program, the basic hyperbaric technician program is exactly what you need. In this course, we're gonna cover how does hyperbaric work? Why does hyperbaric work? What makes hyperbaric oxygen such a unique therapy? What mechanisms of action are taking place? What are the benefits of hyperbaric, both short and long-term? And what types of indications are appropriate to utilize hyperbaric for? We will also help build your confidence, not only in how to utilize the therapy, but how to talk about this therapy with patients or with other healthcare providers that may not understand hyperbarics the way you will once you finish this course. So if you're ready to dive in, click the link below this video and let's get started.